Hello, and welcome to the 113th edition of Beer Issues. My name is Matt Brucker, and I'm coming to you live here from quarantine at Casa de Brucker with this beautiful Beer Issues mask uh, for quarantining. Anyway, I can't talk with this thing on, so I'm going to take it off for right now. But just so you know, we do have these masks available, so if you want some, uh, it's a beautiful mask, uh, let me know. All right. Anyway, today we're going to be having another world-class beer. We're on a roll here. Um, today we're going to be having the Anger Doppelbach, which is the number one rated beer, uh, Bach beer in the world. Uh, it's rated 97 out of 100, makes it a world-class beer. I think it's rated like the 400 and... 37th beer in the beer in the world, but number one rated Bach beer. So I'm really excited about it today. Uh, so we're going to talk about this beer. Like I said, it's rated 97 out of 100, which makes it world class. It clocks in at 6.7% alcohol by volume. I'm going to go ahead and pour it so it gives it a chance to air out so we can get all the smells and flavors in there. And you see that beautiful dark brown to reddish color with a nice uh, tannish to reddish head, as you see there. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a little bit more in there here. This is a great beer. And the nice thing about this beer is not only is it a great beer, but you get a little uh, Christmas ornament with every bottle uh, that you can hang on your Christmas tree until you, if you drink enough of these, you can do your entire tree in these beautiful ornaments here. Uh, so anyway, um, this uh, comes from Germany. It's close, it's, uh, I think it's only like 45 uh, kilometers away from Munich, so it's pretty close by uh, to Munich there. Um, the, the original recipe of this beer is actually an, a, a monk's original recipe, so it's uh, uh, very exciting that we're gonna be having this beer, the number one rated Bach beer in the world, uh, which is very exciting. Ah, so right off the bat, when you smell it, you get a, I definitely smell the malt right off the bat. I think I smell, uh, it could be like a fig, and maybe either chocolate or coffee, or maybe a combination of the two. All right, so before we get into drinking this, I'm gonna talk about, you know, what is a, a Doppelbach, okay? A Doppelbach is an extra strong, rich lager, okay? Um, it, so it has like a, a really strong, uh, malty sweetness, so you get the sweetness of the beer, but then they counteract that with the hoppiness. So you get a combination between the the sweet malty and the hoppiness, which brings in a like a well balanced beer, which is probably why it's rated so uh, um, well. Now, uh, a typical Doppelbach is amber to dark in color, so you're getting some amber, but I would say more dark in this one. Um, Typically clocks in at seven to eight percent alcohol by volume. This is just shy of that at six point seven percent alcohol by volume. But obviously something's right about it because it is the number one uh, uh, Bach beer in the world. So let's go ahead, waste no further time. This they've been brewing this beer, and I, it's hard to uh, research this one real well because the, the the website when you go onto the website there, it's all in German. And uh, even though I am uh, uh, part German, I don't speak German, so I, I don't read in German. Uh, but from the best I could tell, the beer has been brewed since 1876. So this, brew, this beer has been brewed for a long time. So, you know, beers like that that have been around, they've set the standard for what a box should be or a Doppelbach should be. So this, I've had it before, I'm not gonna lie to you. Not my first time having this beer. As a matter of fact, I've had this beer many times. As a matter of fact, one of my good friends, Rick, this is one of his favorite beers. He, we used to love to sit around and drink these together. So cheers, Rick. Um, I'm drinking our beer here. So anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and ch check it out. Oh. Oh. It is just as beautiful as I remember the last time I had it, which has been a while. I, I guarantee I probably haven't had this beer in over, I bet you it's been over a year since I've had this delicious beer. And it does not disappoint. It is perfectly balanced between the, the malty sweetness 
and the hop. So it doesn't, even though you get the sweet when you first get first in your mouth, the hops kind of balance it out to where it's just smooth all the way through. Mm. And I do, one thing about this beer, I didn't smell it, but when I taste it, I almost taste like a, that caramely from the malt, the chocolate, maybe even a, 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 a hint of coffee in there. Um, just a beautiful beer, that maltiness just is so uh, rich and sweet, but you get the counterbalance of the hops. It just brings out a like a perfect beer. Oh, man. There's a reason this is rated 97 and it's a world-class, because it truly is a world-class beer. And I've drank a lot of box beers, a lot of Doppelbox, a regular box, you know, you name it. I've, I think I've had a lot of them. And this, there's a reason why it's number one, is because it's perfect. They balance the beer between the sweetness and the hops to where it's just smooth. Now this, I will say, this is not a beer that I would necessarily normally drink out in the hot sun. As you can see, I'm sitting out here poolside. But I do most of these poolside in the shade. But it's not something I would drink in the hot sun. This is more of a beer that you're going to sit around in the evening or maybe even on a cool, a cool day and sit around and drink it. Because it is, I won't say it's heavy, because it's, for a Bach beer, it's relatively light. Um, but... It's just got a little bit more flavor. It's got a little bit more booze. It's not something to sit around the pool. More, you know, it would be really nice sitting around. If I, if it wasn't so hot and I had my fire pit going over there, and we were sitting around the fire pit, man, it would be a beautiful beer to have around the fire pit on a cool evening night. So I've been trying to save some of these types of beers for um, more the fall uh, to winter time. But my problem with that is, is, you know, it gets into October and then you got your, all your Oktoberfest beers and then, and then at Christmas time, all the Christmas beers come out early. And I got so many beers to, to drink that I'm trying to get some of these other beers. So the, some great beers like this that we can drink a little bit earlier before it gets into the fall and uh, the winter. So when it comes fall and winter, we can drink some of the heavier, heavier beers. And this one isn't too heavy. Actually, none of the beers that we're going to be drinking shortly are going to be uh, that heavy. Um, I've got a, I've got a ton of really good beers that we're going to be doing. Great episodes of beers. You said German beers, Belgian beers, American beers. I mean, you name it. I got a great mix of beers already in the pipeline to have some great uh, great episodes of beer issues. So look forward to lots of great issues with lots of great beer. Not every one of them can be world class, but today, just like the last episode of Beer Issues we're doing, was world class. And if I can find a few more world class beer, we're gonna be doing more world class beer. So cheers to you and cheers to me. And uh, if you've enjoyed this, make sure you tell your friends and they tell their friends and their friends tell their friends until everybody knows about how much fun we're having drinking beer and talking about beer at Beer Issues. And as my wife likes to say, I have beer issues.